Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Through the Bible episode. This one, basically, I want to talk to you today about false prophets. There's a ton of YouTube videos out there about this, so I'm not going to get into all the mega sensationalism, sensationalism that they talk about, because really, you got to go back to the wheat and the tares again. It's really up to God in the end of the age to, he will pull up the false ones, he'll uproot them, and he'll gather the true prophets, the true people into heaven, and he'll do that. So, I'm not going to like start naming names, I'll name a couple names. David Koresh, I mean, he said he was the devil and God at the same time. Anybody that does that, pretty much, it's like things like that are obvious. But, um, let me just give you scriptural basis to keep it easy. Uh, in the Old Testament, God said, If any prophet prophesies something to you, and it does not come to pass, do not listen to him, for he's, the, for he's not a prophet. It was like an easy litmus test. If a prophet came to them and said, Hey, next spring, you're going to get lots of rain, and then next harvest, you're going to get tons of wheat. And then next spring, it was a drought, and then at the harvest time, they had no food then obviously that prophet was false. If you look at the king, I think it was King Ahab, one of the kings, I'm not sure exactly which one, I have to look it up, but he went and he grabbed his prophets and they came to him and they said, there was another king that he joined into battle. Both of them are gonna go together to fight. And they're like, all right. All the prophets came out and they said, go to battle, great king, you're gonna win, you're gonna win. And prophet after prophet after prophet came to this guy and he said, you're going to win. They all said, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win, right? Well, the king going into battle with this guy said, this sounds something fishy. All of these guys are telling me, telling you what you want to hear. Isn't there one more prophet in your kingdom? And he's like, yeah, Micah. But that guy never says anything good about me. And the other king's like, I want to hear him. So they bring Micah out to tell the king what's up. And just like he said, Micah says, if you go, you're going to die. You're not going to win. And they're like, see, he never says anything good about me. Take him away. Jesus said, woe to you when all men speak well of you. For so their fathers did of the false prophets. But blessed are you when men persecute you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake, for so they did about the prophets who were before you. So a sign of a false prophet is he's pretty much telling everybody what they want to hear. He will tell you everything is well. Even if he opens the Bible and it says, if a person continues in a certain lifestyle, it ends in their spiritual death and demise. He'll tell you that because he wants to line his pockets with your money or he wants to be your friend or whatever it is. There's a scripture in the Bible that says the wounds of a friend are faithful, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So take heed to yourself. And I read a great little caption today about, they were talking about Elijah and it said, don't follow your thoughts or other people's thoughts, but follow God's word. What does that say? That's the truth. Your mind might say, man, I can smoke cigarettes. It's awesome. And I can quit before I die. Friends might say, yeah, dude, I, I smoked uh, 10 years so far and I don't have any problems. And my dad smoked right, right until he died and he was fine. But then if you open the Bible, it says, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit. And one day I was sitting there in the military out of Camp Pendleton, California, and I'm smoking a cigarette <sighs> on the sidewalk, chilling. I looked over and there was a church, and I thought, man, I wouldn't take this cigarette into the church and smoke it. And why am I blowing it into my body, which is a temple of the Holy Spirit? And I, I kind of took an oath, swore to God I would quit. And from that point on, I quit for many years and I, I broke my oath. Forgive me, God. That's another thing. Don't make foolish oaths. But, but basically, 
don't follow because you can rationalize any sin. Just look at the Bible in black and white and follow that. You know what I mean? I mean, there is interpretation and you interpret it four ways. Historically, grammatically, symbolically, and within context of the paragraph. So I say all this to you in love and you think, man, these are hard words. I, I don't want to hear words about you got to change, you got to repent. Look at John the Baptist. He was a true prophet and he didn't come along saying, line your pockets with gold. He said, repent. And yeah, he even denounced the most powerful person in Israel at that time, one of the most powerful ones, King Herod. And what? Just because he was sleeping with his wife. I think he, his, his brother had died or something and he took his his brother's wife, which was an abomination. And the scriptures say, don't lay with your brother's wife. Don't lust after your brother's wife, right? So he was preaching the truth, man. And it wasn't popular. So just that's one of the, the icons of two. I gave you two today. Number one, a true prophet, if he prophesies something and it doesn't come to pass, don't listen to him. The founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses said the world's going to end in this date. He wrote down a specific date. That date came, he changed his prophecy. Then he changed it again. And he basically did it by counting the numbers on the pyramids in Egypt. What type of Christian has anything to do with something like that? Anyways, but it didn't come to pass. So if he did that, why would you still follow him? Uh, Church of Seventh-day Adventists. They had a founder who prophesied the end of the world. Certain specific date. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And he said, you know, what? I was wrong. I superimposed all this. Counting genealogies. It was me. I was wrong. But I think um, a female, she's like one of the big founders of the church too. She said, oh, God was wrong. He hid the dates from us. And I see it more clearly now. And the dates were right. It was just confusing. And she went on to believe and propagate that. God does not lie. When Isaiah prophesied something, it would happen. When, when King David was singing and he prophesied, they pierced my feet and hands. It came that past. The Messiah was had his hands and fierce, fierce peace. Feet pierced. When it prophesied that, oh, you Bethlehem who are small, even though you're small little city and all the tribes and everything, out of you will come the one to rule Israel. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So basically, watch out for false prophets. Those are two little measuring sticks of them. Number one, if they say something, it doesn't come to pass. Don't follow them. Number two, they're the most popular prophets in the world. They say everything everyone wants to hear all the time. To the extent that even if it conflicts with God. Now there are some preachers out there who do nothing but preach positive messages. I'm not talking about those guys because they'll put the little asterisk. As long as you honor God, you'll reap good blessings. So there are positive preachers out there and I love them and I listen to them when I'm down, when I'm depressed. But you know that the false prophets will never conflict with sin. They will never challenge sin. All right. But this is an upbeat message because now we can know what true prophets are. And it's like this, man. If you see a piece of cancer on your friend or your, your wife or anybody and you know it's cancer, but you don't say anything, you're like, I'm not telling them it's going to hurt their feelings. They got cancer on them. I'm not telling them about it. But if you really love them, even though that cancer is ugly and they're going to yell at you, you say, hey, that cancer on your hand, you got to cut it out and it's going to hurt. It's going to cut with a knife or they do chemotherapy and all that. So anyways, love people enough to tell them. But do it in humility and love unless you fall into the same sins. Because we're all sinners. That's another hallmark of prophets. Moses was one of the most humble men who ever lived. All right? So let's just pray to God that he opens our eyes to his voice and that we reject false prophets. All right? Have a great day.